Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. I read, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but deny its power, have nothing to do with them. Let us pray. Eternal Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you and glorify your name for this Sabbath morning. And we thank you for this day that you set apart, that we may come together to glorify your name and to thank you for all the things that you've done to us, Lord. This is a day that you've created, a day of redemption. Thank you for the wonderful moment. As we go into this session, Lord, we pray that, Lord, you will walk with us and you will bind us with your love and peace. Bless the families that are presented here. We ask all this trusting and believing in your holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we move on to this today, I want us to pray. Gracious Father in heaven, the hour is now that you we are inviting your presence <clears throat> that you be part of us, Lord, as a family. Our families are under attack. But this is an institution that you established in the Garden of Eden. But today we are here, Lord, as one family, just to glorify your name and to give you glory for all, everything that you've done to us. Lord, whatever we are going to discuss, whatever we are going to say, these words are not from me, but they are from you. Lord, use me as a vessel. Let your spirit guide us, Lord, as we go through. This is a moment, Lord, that our homes have been tested. Since March, Lord, we know to be in our churches because Satan is roaming everywhere. But we thank you and glorify your name. But despite all this, Lord, you are still with us. And we are here in one accord and as a family. Take us through this until the end of it. Because we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When we spoke with Peter, told me you are dealing with parental crisis during COVID-19 pandemic. That's what he told me. I don't know what, whether what I have prepared today will match to that Thing. But I think it will be almost like that. When we look at what we are going to talk about, uh, eh, somewhere it will be there. But I'm looking at it. That our families are families are under captive. When we talk about family life, we are talking about the, our daily routines. We are talking about our daily life within our homes. And we are talking about a father in the home. And we are talking about a mother in the home. And we are talking about the children in the home. I don't want to go outside that. But beside the these three pillars, the mother, the, the father, and the children. We also have our relatives that we have. Today, I don't want to talk about that because if we want to talk about that one, we will leave you at seven. 
But I just want us to, I want us to focus that families, homes, they were not casting stones. But there must be origin. And I would like us to turn us to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, 26 and 27. And God is telling us, God is doing his creation part. Day one, you will know all that, the order in which God did the creation. But I want us to focus on chapter 1, 26 and 27. And God is saying, and let us create man in our own image and what? And likeness. God is using the word, let us. Which means God is not alone in this. Let us create man in our own image and likeness. God is not alone in this. God, there is a group, there is a team. But we are seeing God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Let us create man in our own image and likeness. And the whole heaven say, yes, that is what we are going to do. And man was created. Man was put in the garden of Eden to do what? To tend it and do what? And care for it. God created man. Man is given a home in the garden of what? Eden. To do what? To take care of it. And to do what? And to nurture it. Man was put in the garden of Eden. Both male and female were doing what were created. And the heavenly host saying, now let us do what? Give them power and authority. To do what? To take care. To nurture. Verse 18 of Genesis, the same Genesis. God is looking at man. And all the things that God created from day one to the fifth day, everything was good and beautiful, perfect. It is looking at man and saying, this man is alone. And it is not good for man to be what? To be alone. I will make him a helper, suitable for him. A helper suitable for him. Even if you don't go further, we can have that. We obviously we know that this helper who is suitable for him is who? It's the mother, it's the mom in the house. God is establishing what? A home. Composed of who? The father and who? The mother. And when the man of the home was was woken up and he saw the mother of the home, he gave him a very nice description. Bone of my bone and flesh of my own, my flesh. It's not far from what we do. I know we have in our homes we have those home, those names there. We have them. My chocolate. My mango. My anything. Bone of my bone. Flesh of my one. My flesh. When you say, when you tell her, bone of my bone and flesh of my my flesh. What you look at the person and it's coming from where? From within. Even if I say my guava, it comes from where? From within. My sweet, it comes from where? From within. There is some affection. Because God is saying, I'm giving him a helpmate suitable for what? For him. And therefore, when I call mine sweetie, I deserve it. 
Because God said it suitable for him. It happened that way. A suitable helmet was given to the man. And God united the two in relationship, created a home on earth by establishing marriage institution. And what happened? Life began. And when life began, the first child was born, was born. That is who? Kai. And then followed by the second one. That is who? A family is established. Father, mother, and what? And the children. That's what we call a family. Young men who have not married. And young ladies who are not married. That is the life. And the power and authority has also been given to us. So when we enter into this agreement and in this institution, life must be key. Because the Bible is telling us we are giving you the power and authority to nurture and to do what? And to tend, to take care of them. Responsibility has been given to us. So when you enter into the American institution, know one thing, that nurturing will be there. Caring will be what? Will be there. Obviously. That is what we were. But before that, challenges are there. But before the challenge came, when Adam and Eve were alone, and they had been given the Garden of Eden, Satan is there. Satan told the woman, It's a very nice home, a very nice garden, with all the trees planted by who? Planted by God Himself. A man was put there, and the woman was there, looked at everything, everything was good. But there is test of obedience. No, we had an instruction. The home has been given to us. There are rules that have been set. We are in the garden of heaven. But rules have been what? Have been set. God himself has set the rule. God himself has placed the values in this garden. And he said, that of all the things we can enjoy, but only one, the fruit that is at the middle of the what? Of the garden. A test of obedience. God is a liar. He's telling you that because he knows the moment you do this, you will be like him. That was the voice of who? Voice of Satan. I would like us to be, be very keen where I'm leading you to. I'm seeing the first, when man was instituted by God, I, I'm seeing man was blessed in the Garden of Eden. I'm seeing woman is here. I'm seeing children are here. But I'm telling you, Satan is also here. Talking to who? Talking to the woman. Talking to the woman. You know the power of choice. And woman, Eve, fell a victim. And they, he gave the man. How can I refuse? If God has given me a suitable one for to be to help me, and the suitable one has given me a fruit. How can I refuse? But that was test of obedience. And they ate. And they realized they real that they have gone astray. And they realized that they were naked. 
the righteousness of God that was covering was taken away. Who has caused it? Satan. My brothers and sisters. The walk to heaven is not easy. Fellow families are under attack. Look at it. Immediately, the marriage institution was established. Satan was there. Satan went to who? Talked to the home. This is a boy that we know. That I know the whole. But because he is possessed, he stands in his own world. And there's several. The serpent is being used, but the voice that is coming out is not this, the normal snake. It is the what? It's the devil. Where is the origin? We can look at trace this back in the book of Genesis. In our homes, what? is killing us. In every country, what is killing every country is one thing, character. Family values, morals is killing us. Give me a national newspaper right now. For today, I have not seen it. But give it to me. And we start going through it. And you see all the reports that we will read from that particular newspaper. We will see the element of what? Bad morals. Do you think our country is moving in the right direction? Answer me. Do you think our country is moving in the right direction? No. And we blame our leaders, isn't it? And we blame the church. Who is blaming the leaders? The families, isn't it? The homes, isn't it? Because we are not cast on stones. I blame them. But eventually, even if I'm blaming them and I'm in town, eventually, by 9.30, because curfew is there, I must be what? I must be, all of us will be now what? Our homes. But we have blamed the what? The leaders. Correct. Morals. The genesis of this is not even in church. The genesis is where? Our home. What have we done in our homes? Because our home has been created to us and we have been given power and authority by the who? By the maker. That we should do what? We should nurture Take care and tend. What have you done? <coughs> I would like us to look at the book of Job. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Look at Job chapter 1. I will still tell you that our families are under attack. Our families are under attack. Chapter 1, verse 1. <coughs> In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. This man, he also had a what? A family. Seven what? Sons. Three daughters. Blessed. And this man was respected. The household was big. He had, he, was, he had many servants. But one thing that is key 
in the family of Job that if God himself knew that Ma Job was a man of high morals, that Job was a man of high character. And God is giving a description that this man, Job, is my servant. God is describing Job as my, my servant. And for you to be a servant of God and qualified by God himself, there are some things, some values that you must have. You must be what? Blameless. You must be blameless. You must be upright. You must fear God. You must turn away from all evil. And when, as much as we are talking about, we are looking at Job, and we are only looking, seeing that the righteous, that Job was righteous, and that is what God was trying to put across. But I want us to look at it in the context of family life. Blameless, upright, feared God, turned away from all evil, and he was what? Was wealthy. So when there was a meeting in heaven, God looked at the Satan. When we talk about Job, I want us not to lose track of what we discussed in the book of Genesis, what we saw in the book of Genesis. We are seeing Satan attacking whom? Attacking the woman. Satan is using the home and is approaching who? Approaching the woman. Strategy. <coughs> Satan strategy. Discussion between God and Satan. And Satan, God is asking him, Where, where do you come from? But what does the response? I come from down there. I'm moving everywhere. Wander from where? Place to place. I move everywhere. I wander. But when he's one, he's wandering and moving from place to place. What is the implication? That this person is everywhere, is trying to confuse people, is trying to confuse homes. So when in the Garden of Eden, the marriage institution was established, Satan was there, wandering from where? From place to place. And he has now, when the meeting was on, is confirming that I am everywhere. Where you are, have you seen my servant Job, a person who is blameless, upright, who feared me, who turned away from evil? But then, because of that, I have blessed him. He has all the riches. It can't be for. It can't be for nothing. And Satan says, "There is nothing for free. Nothing for free." You have given him. You have given him everything. You have given him ten children. Well, ten children, those are not gifts. And those are not well. Wow. You have given him all the things. Nothing for free. He said, I respect you because of all these things that you have given him. Try to take these things. If you will not, turn away from him. Was released. I tell you, 
we are in the COVID period. You people may be okay, but myself, I feared it. COVID, Corona, myself, I feared it. Because I don't know where it was coming from. I just sneeze, and you, you have it. I just sneeze, and you do it, and you have it. And all of us, even the, the states feared it. That is why today we are at home. For six months, children have been at home. At home. People lost their work, their jobs. All the businesses closed down. Because we feared it. Some people have relocated to their world, to their rural homes to start what? A life. But some are celebrating. Some are celebrating. Because before the COVID, fathers were not staying at home. Fathers were not there. But today, they are ever present. Some are celebrating. One person told me, me, I'm happy because of this COVID, because I lost my employment. But one thing that I'm happy of, that this position has given me an opportunity to read the word of God and to know that God exists. So as, we, as much as we look at the dark side of it, we also look at the bright side, bright side of it. But the fact of the matter is, this disease has been terrible. All our churches are closed. But one thing that I wonder, ladies, the churches were, uh, were closed. We are now coming back. But when people going to the market? Ladies, were you going to the market? The churches were closed, but the market was open. But who was caring for you? You are going out and coming in. God. God. But we were scared. But let me to see this family of Job. A man who has been, who has been described as my servant. A man who was blameless, upright. A man who feared God. No evil at all. When reports started coming in to him, a messenger came unto Job and said, As we were plowing and the don don donkeys grazing, the Siberians came and took away the oxen and donkeys and killed all your servants. But I was left to do what? To report the first casualty. The wealth is doing what? Is leaving this man. The oxen, the donkeys, they were all taken away. And they killed the what? The servants. As he was talking, another came. The fire came from heaven, burned all the sheep and servants. Nothing for what? For free. He respects you, he fears you, because you have given him what? Wealth. Now the wealth is doing what? Is, is going. The family of Job is under attack. By who? Satan. The third one, the child has came attack the servants, kill them, and carry away all the camels. All the animals were swept away. And you know those days, a person would be called a wealthy person because of the word, the number of animals that he had. So the wealth was taken away. And then you look at what other things? Your sons and daughters had a feast in your elder son's house. 
And a strong wind came and struck the four corners of the house and they were are all dead. The wealth is gone. The children are gone. The family that was happy, the family that the that Lord knew where the, the priest of the home, the man, is described by God himself as my servant, is under attack. The children is gone. Everything is gone. Still, Satan persisted. Scheme for scheme. Now he has not, he respects you. He's blameless. But now, touch his life. Job was attacked by diseases. Friends, cancer is wiping us. High blood pressure is killing us. Heart attack is wasting us. Skin for skin. Everything is gone. Job is down. Job was quarantined. Cannot move out. Who is doing all this thing? Satan. Then again, if you look at Job 2 verse 9, the one, it made the lady to speak. The mom of the house had to speak. Everything that was there, gone. The life that was there was gone. The singings that were there, gone. But the pain and the agony is experienced in this hall. The lady had to speak. But how I wish this lady would say, May God of mercy look upon this family and take away the pain. I wish that could have been a prayer. But Satan is determined to rock every home, to rock every family. And the lady says, with all this, do you still want to retain your integrity? Do you still want to serve God? You've lost all your children. You've lost all your wealth. Now, what is it? And you are sick. You are down. You can't move. Now, do you still want to praise God? Do you still want to be upright? Satan is attacking the values within our homes. Satan is attacking the morals within our world. Our homes. If you are morally upright, you are an enemy to who? To Satan. Cast God and die. Is that what we are saying? That we are cursing God and die. But look at this. The presence of Satan. Here, using who? Using the lady, using the man of the house. Let us go back to the Garden of Eden. Satan is using who? The, the, the suitable one, the wife, the man of the house. Job said, You are speaking like a foolish woman. Are we okay? Oh, praise God when things are good and turn away when the evil, the evil visited us. Look at the courageous man. Fathers, my fellow fathers, we are the priests in our homes. We are the priests in our homes. We must lead we must lead. We must be there in our homes to take the laws of priests. We must be there for our children. Our children need us. 
Because those are the people that have been told, can you take care of them? Can you nurture them? We must be there for them. We must be there for them. Brothers and sisters, we need to set family values and live by it. Because Satan, we have confirmed that is roaming everywhere. It's now directing, focusing on our homes. Our work is to nurture, take care of them, and we release them. Our parents did the same to us. You are present here today. We are here. Where I come from is almost 380 kilometers away from this place. Down there the lake, Homer Bay. But I'm here in Siokima Ward, east, with a great purpose that God has given me the responsibility and power and authority has been placed in my hand that I should do the what? I should do the nurturing and I should do the what? The caring. And God has placed this power and authority in your hand. That's why you have set a home. And once you've set this home and you've done the nurturing and caring, then you're supposed to re release my family, my father and my mom released me to the world. I'm now meeting you, but I didn't know you. You are meeting me because you had been released by you, by your mothers and by your, your fathers. In a similar way, these young ones were supposed to nurture them and do what? Care for them so that we release them to what? To the world. What are we releasing? What are we releasing? Young, a small baby that is born does not possess any character. This young baby is hollow. There is nothing in this person, in this baby, nothing at all, just there. Just there. But every time you study this, the child, Every day, Elobore, you come back from work. After one week, you see developments. What? In this particular baby. On a daily basis, there is what? There is development. There is new things that is coming into this baby. But this baby will always, when the mother carries the baby, say, look straight in the eyes of the mother. And study. When the mother is sad, the little baby will is watching and seeing there is something here. When the mother is happy and is smiling, the little baby who is watching, and of course she will also go on he will what? He will smile back. What are we putting? Are we putting hatred in the life of this young person? Are we putting all the insults in this world in the life of this girl. We have been given responsibility to nurture and to take care of. Let us be available for our children so that we train them. Set time for them. Have a family meeting. Let them ask those questions. They will ask you the questions. And all these children, when they are asking questions, they are asking leading questions. One day I went to visit my, my sister, my elder sisters, and uh, it was a long time, and there was a. He had a, his la, second last born, a boy. He was young. And he told me, Uncle. So my sister brought porridge, placed it on the table. And this young boy came. And then he asked me, Uncle, do you, do you take porridge? Then I was hesitant. And then, then I said, No. I don't take porridge. May I, may I take porridge? Can I take it? That was what? A little question.
question. A leading question. If you are not taking porridge, then I'm here with you. I will die. A leading question. Be with this, these people. Very here. Sit down with them. Nurture them. Take care of them. That's the sole responsibility of the mothers. That's the sole responsibilities of our fathers. So if we are absent in their life, then they are what? Who is giving them all these things, the stuff? You never, you, you never know. They ask you a question, and this question as a Christian will lead you to have a topic. Spiritual guidance. One day we were sitting in our house and our girl is, talks a lot. And we were going through the family album where we had our wedding. And this little girl asked the man. She could not understand why she was not in our wedding. She, why, mommy? I'm not seeing my mini. I'm not seeing myself here during your wedding. No, as a parent. <laughs> When you are getting married to you, to Mama, then your son is asking you, why was I not in your wedding? That is an opportunity for, me, for you now to start talking about what? Marriage. It's an opportunity for you to start talking about what? Sex and what? And sexuality. You see, this child has brought something to you. Another one will ask, Daddy, why is the sky blue? It's an opportunity for you as a family to do what? To discuss about God's creation. So when we talk about these children, here, they're very smart. But it is our sole responsibility to take care of them. But what do we put in them? What do we put in them that makes them be people? Our characters are put into tests. Because what we feed them, we are absent in our homes. Work is too much for us. And then you live very early in the morning. Mama lives very early in the morning. And you come late. And then we blame. We blame the environment. And then we blame the neighborhood. And then we blame the peers in school. Where are you? What have you placed in the life of this child? Because this child, when he came or she came to this world, she was whole. There was no character in him or in her. But you, Supposed to nurture and do what? To care. And you're supposed to give her good stuff. And then when you give good stuff, then you release him to the world. And once you've released him to the world, or to, the, to this country, then people will look at him and say, so and so is blameless. Is upright. Has no evil in him. Is not corrupt. The credit goes back to who? To you as a parent. But this can only work when we practice what we do, what, what we do. In a family you will find it is difficult. I agree. Because in a family of two, I gave back, I married my wife. By the way, now we are 19 years in marriage. God is still taking care of us. We are still calling ourselves uh, those, those good names. And we are in this one year. Because we know that this world is not our home. And we have been given a responsibility. 
to nurture and to care. But one thing that is, it is only God who can do it. Not by my strength, not by her strength, not by your strength, not by your spouse's strength. Because there is something here that is complication, that has a lot of complication, but we find ourselves in. I was brought up in a home with different values and different rules. She was brought up in a home with different values and different what? rules. But the two of us do what? They come together. We come together. And we start what? Alive. If it is not God, we cannot do what? We cannot survive. So the first school. The first church is our home. So when we release a child to come to church, there is some, some nurturing and some care that has been taken on, been taken at home. That is the first good. But you know the irony? That we live there, we are too busy, and we go to church. And when I was a deacon, when I was a deacon, we would run up and down with the children. Some of us are going on, but we are doing what? We are doing the running. But I am glad that I can see children here are quiet. Some nurturing, some care has been done. That is the sole responsibility of the mom and the, and the dad. Man, you are the priest of the home. Many times I go to homes and I see when people want to pray. Where is Mamu Mundi? Mamu Mundi come and pray. It is mothers, mothers, mothers all the time. Man, where are you? And you are the priest of the home. Let us stand up and, and be there. Because these homes, these are the first churches that we have. And then we release the, the main one to to Sikumau East. Then from there, the Sikumau East will also do what? Do their part. And we together we release them to what? To the world. And they do what? The service to the community. Because everything is about service. But who will give us service when you want to eat everything and leave us? Friends, we have small, small things that makes us get curses. Small, small things. Be there for your family. Be there for your relatives. Be there for your relatives if they're there. The person that has been placed in your hand, be there for that person. Preach for that person. There are these people that we call aunties in our houses. When you are away, the auntie is at what? At home. When mom and dad are away, the aunties are where? At home. But in most cases, if you look at the people that we call the aunties, that help us, that are our house managers, in one way or other, majority of them, we find that this person probably is a needy person. This person is a needy. This person either is an orphan, but this person is trying to what? To find life. These are the people that comes into our what? Our homes. Because Elder Bore and Mama would not want their child to go and work for me. When El Obore has the strength and the power. But somebody who has a need, who wants to make a life, comes into my life. This person is, every, is ever present in my life. But as I told you, that people are different. The values in my home, the values in their home, was different, but God brought us together. This person who is coming as a household 
has also parents with the same problem, with different values. Unfortunately, this person wants some life. And this person comes to a Christian home. And this person maintains the cleanliness in this home. And this person is responsible for cooking. But when it comes to eating, this person eats wajikoni. This person cannot sit with you on the table. When it comes to food, now she can eat there. But when you are out, she's entrusted with the what? With the entire house. But I claim to be a Christian. What am I preaching? Small, small things that we interact with on a daily basis is rocking our homes. And we say, what has bewitched our homes? Friends, let us look at those things. Let us look at those things. Let us look at those things. Let us practice what we say. Let us be honest. Let us model our intentions. Let us make, have a vision for a better future for our children. 